Cup competitions. Every great footballing nation has won and every great footballing nation does it in their own magic way. In England, they've got the FA Cup, 150 years of history, making it the oldest in the world. In France, they've got the Coupe de France, encompassing 8,000 teams, making it arguably the biggest cup competition in the world. And it's no different here in Germany, where their cup, the DFB Pokal, has a magic of its own. They have an expression in German football. The DFB Pokal has its own rules. The DFB Pokal has its own rules. The Pokal has its own rules. The cup has its own rules. On a given day, anything can happen. And that's because the magic of the DFB Pokal started at the very beginning from round one, thanks to its extremely unique draw. So it's not like in, in England with the FA Cup where the Premier League teams only enter at the third round. In Germany, the Bundesliga teams, second Bundesliga teams, third division teams all start in the first round, plus the winners of these regional cups which took place the previous season. This mad draw ensures there's narratives behind every Fifth division, even sixth division amateur teams who have won their local cup being in the same draw as Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund. It's just incredible to see two groups of organized fans from uh, sides that you could never see meeting in a, on a league platform. And just like any good cup tournament, despite the unevenness, even in round one, every match guarantees mad, you can't even make it up moments. Hertha Berlin's reserve team made it to a cup final. Hertha Berlin's first team have never achieved that. Alemannia Aachen, fourth league. Fourth division team. Yes. Bayern Munich, Bayern München. They knocked out Bayern Munich. Tschüss. Yes, Bayern Munich. Go oh, by, yalla tschüss. And when you combine it with the, the local element of German football, it creates a combination that is really unbeatable in my eyes. And so as another DFB Pogel kicks off, Copa 99 decided we want to experience this famous or infamous round one for ourselves. So we're going to three matches in three different parts of the country in three days to see for ourselves just what is the magic of the DFB Pokal. Well, we start off our DFB Pokal adventure here in West Germany, the small town of Krefeld to be exact. Home to Krefeld Football Club Erlinen 05 or KFC Erlinen 05 for short. A very small club with a mega crazy history that's intertwined with this tournament. Why I love Uddingen? Well, I born in Uddingen. I die in Uddingen. Red and blue. This is the color from my, from my club. Now whilst today, yes, they reside amongst the lower leagues in German football, that hasn't always been the case. And back in the 80s, KFC Erdogan in 05 actually competed with the bigger boys. We were playing in the first division. The history is great. We had also some national players in the German national team. In fact, the club's most glorious moment in its 100 year history was in that decade in this tournament. This one, I show, I show you on this shirt. 85, that's the season when we were, won the German Cup. Against Bayern München. We were the first team who went to Berlin. Every time was in this city and this city. That was the first cup final in Berlin. Yeah, yeah in Berlin. And then before it was in some... In different cities. In different cities. And then the uh, uh, German community has said every poker finally yeah. is in Berlin. So you won the first poker in Berlin? Yes. And then you have a song now. We in created a, a chant, a song. Berlin, Berlin, we fahren nach Berlin. Everybody now is singing. But in the late 90s, things really went downhill when their main backers, Bayer, took away funding to focus solely on the club in Leverkusen. And that's when things really turned south. We went into the sixth tier. From the first? From the first into the sixth. We went down. Down, 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 down. How down? Down. How? Down, 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 down. Wow. And then cash. Finished. Finished. Mired all the way down in the sixth division. Things got so bad, the club had to turn to desperate measures just to survive. It's true that you guys auctioned the chance to be the coach of the yeah. club. Yeah. Tell me that story. That's that, that. I've never heard that in the world. Well, we were broke, of course. So um, how can you get some generate some money? Was uh, well, eBay. Pete Doherty from the Libertines. What did he do? And Pete Doherty grew up a few years in Krefeld. Yeah, he was a fan. Yeah, to the game. Yeah. 
Yeah, and there are videos and he's singing sha la 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 early again. He helped their cause or he helped tell people? Yeah, when, when we were broke, yeah. I think he sent his video message and uh, yeah, we were allowed to, to advertise with him. But whilst they're now back in the professional divisions, according to the DFB, their facility still aren't up to scratch. So despite being the home team, they're having to play their home match 30 minutes up the road in Dusseldorf. Now whilst playing here in Dusseldorf means they're going to miss out on having a literal home advantage, where KFC 05 will benefit is financially because this ground can hold up to 50,000 fans and it's going to come close to selling out, not because of the little home side, but the very big away side. None other than Borussia Dortmund. Truly one of the giants of German football. Their history is intertwined with the DFB Pockel. They've won it four times, been runners up five, and their fan base is one of the best in Germany, if not the world. But it's their experience in the first round of this tournament where the real magic of the DFB can be found in Dortmund's history. Where despite their giant size, they've stumbled against tiny opposition multiple times. There was 97 against Eintracht Trier. And ging ebenfalls unter im Mosel Stadion. 2005 against Antrag Braunschweig. Oh, jetzt die Möglichkeit für Graf und der Ball ist im Tor! Der weiß, wie man trifft im Pokal! And 2010 against Kickers Offenbach. Bach, Lütterleck bei Dortmund, Lewandowski. Die Kickers Offenbach warfen den BVB aus dem Pokal. And so despite the fact that KFC 05 should really have no chance against a club of this size, well if a club of this size has shown us anything, it's that anything can happen in the DFB Pokal. This is raw meat and it's uh, scrambled. It's with onions and usually you do uh, salt and pepper. Can I say the name? Mittwoch. Met. Met. Brötchen. Brötchen. We're in a small town in Germany. There's hours to the game. They're just taking over the street and bouncing. This is going to get squishy, that's so I'm just going to warn you. Oh, look at this! They actually bring their own beer bottle holders, the German way. So obviously this is a cup involving small teams who always need financial assistance. Check this out. The Erdingen fans are passing around a giant box to put donations in. Cavani coming into the move, Rodriguez! Erdingen just came with his centimeters! Oh. Alcacer! Another unbelievable save by the Erdingen goalkeeper. Borussia have had like 10 clear goals stopped off the line. From Erdingen, and that's almost. Oh, he's been beat, eh? Oh, he got. Oh, Akanji, and he slips it through to Marco Reus. Instant control. Might fancy his chances. Oh, he certainly did! Well, they didn't get the uh, magical upset, but today a third division team that was meant to be dead played a match amongst 40,000 people. We're 20 minutes after the match, and look at the KFC and the North Fire fans, they are still singing. That is the magic of the DFB Pockle, and we still got two more games to go. All right, day two, and we are hitting the famous autobahn for a three-hour drive south for our second match. It's FC Kaiserslautern versus Mainz. Another third-tier team against a first-tier team, but this time the David versus Goliath roles are kind of changed because it's actually the lower league team, FC Kaiserslautern, that's arguably the bigger club. This is a huge football club. As recently as 2001, they were UEFA Cup semi-finalists. You see FC Kaiserslautern, the club boasting one of the richest histories in the German game. They won two Bundesligas and DFB Pockels in the 90s alone. They've boasted some of the biggest stars in the game. Michel Balak and Miroslav Klose, Franz Walter, player that won Germany's first World Cup. And they've got one of the most iconic stadiums in Germany. The stadium is absolutely brilliant. Uh, one for the football romantics, for sure. It's on a small mountain. Uh, the mountain is called Betze. In the stadium, it says Bettenberg, the mountain of Betze. They're famous for that. 
that name as well. There's a reason this stadium here holds more than 40,000 people. And it was planned with the purpose of being the home of Kaiserslautern because their fan base is so massive. But like we saw with Erdingen yesterday, financial problems off the pitch have affected the club on the pitch, which has resulted in multiple relegations, including a first ever to the third division. This is a huge football club who have had a pretty dramatic collapse in recent years. And so once again, the DFB Pockel is helping another once legendary club get back into the headlines. And on top of that, it's providing a derby because FC Kaiserslautern's opposition today is Mainz, a team from the same region. Two clubs from the Rhineland-Pfalz, from the Pfalz region. Uh, in English, it's called Palatinate. And when these two teams play, they don't get along and there's always fireworks. The last time they met in the FA Cup was the quarter final, went to penalties. Uh, the coach lost it completely, the Kaiserslautern coach. I saw that in the press conference. Yes, the press conference. Why? Uh, there was an incident with a uh, ball that hit the post, uh, complete chaos basically. Like it, it crossed the line but it didn't cross the yeah, line. Yeah, exactly, one of those. The 11 meter was in, that would have been 3-0. Gewesen. Und dann glaube ich, sind wir weiter. Und dann haben die Schiedsrichter sehen sowas nicht. Das hat es eigentlich in der ganzen Pokal DFB Pokalgeschichte, glaube ich, noch nicht gegeben. It's basically one of the legendary press conferences in Germany and uh oh, I remember because also Mainz had uh, Jürgen Klopp at the time. Yeah. Ich ist normal, den Ärger kann ich hundertprozentig nachvollziehen, aber mehr kann ich dazu eigentlich auch nicht sagen. Every single time they play, it gets um, yeah emotional. The only problem is with them being in such different divisions, they haven't met in a while. Two rivals hadn't actually met in a competitive game since 2012. Luckily, the cups ensured they finally meet each other again. This sort of games is basically what people love the competition. You talk about the third league side that consider themselves way bigger than the first division side. This weekend's game against Main, one of the biggest days in Kaiser Stoughton's recent history. I am um, uh, Rostwurst. On the front foot now, though, with Quaison. Good save still, Timmy Tila! Penalty! Starker will take this for Kaiser Slauten. Oh, the goalkeeper saved it initially. <laughs> Final two minutes of the 90. Scrambled away by the goalkeeper. Pushed back again. Scartelidis, Florian Pick, 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 he's got to score! It's two Right, here we go, day three. And once again, we started on the Autobahn and once again, we are heading south for match three for another game between a third division team that's hosting a first division team. This time, the lower league hosts are SV Waldhof. SV Waldhof Mannheim. Yes. Such a big tradition. This club is from 19... 07. They play in, in blue and black. They were famous in the 80s. Quite a small club who've just been promoted from the fourth. They've been through some hard times recently. We, we got down to the like seventh league. But they play in an incredibly cool stadium. Karl Benz Karl Stadium. Karl Benz. Yeah, Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes Benz. Who invented the first car. So he's like a local legend. Yeah. Of course he is. They actually set a record for a fifth division game though when almost 14 and a half thousand fans turned up yeah, to watch an effectively amateur game in Germany. But it's in the recent history of SV Wilders opponents, Eintracht Frankfurt, where the real magic of this tournament can be found today. Because only two seasons ago, Eintracht Frankfurt went all the way. 30 years for the last title and you win that against Bayern Munich, it was 
better than sex. <laughs> a dramatic finale where Frankfurt broke away on the counter attack uh, to make it 3 1 right in front of their own fans gathering the Olympic Stadium. Few absolute chaos. Mian Dexinovic seals it. Hands onto the air, onto the running track. Substitutes, coaching staff all piling in. And if you want to know how much this tournament means to German football fans, well, all you need to do is look at the celebrations and scenes in Berlin on that final or for the weeks after in Frankfurt. Best, best ever body. Yeah, you only have to see the reaction of the fans in the stadium and the absolute euphoria that that victory unleashed in the city of Frankfurt. Uh, over 300,000 people. The biggest night in Eintracht Frankfurt's recent history. But it's what happened to Eintracht Frankfurt in the next DFB Pockel season, only a few months later, that told the real story of this tournament. As Eintracht Frankfurt, as reigning title holders, were knocked out in the first round. Knocked out of their own competition just three months after lifting the trophy to so Division 4 side, SSV Ulm. <laughs> A bunch of basically amateurs. And they have an Ulm is famous for its huge cathedral, but not really for its football team. Es gibt keine Kleinen mehr. And so whilst the chances of another upset happening, like we saw yesterday, seems almost impossible, if Eintracht Frankfurt have taught us anything in this tournament, it's that anyone can go all the way or be knocked out in the first round. Mannheim isn't far from Frankfurt. Obviously. It's like the best place in the world. Since about 2006, particularly the, the ultras of both clubs, have had a relatively close relationship. They're actually considered friends. But yesterday we had a derby. It was tense. You had all that amazing rivalry feel. Today, because Mannheim and Frankfurt are friends, everyone's getting along. To look over there. Look over there. Everyone. Everyone is just full of party. One of the best things about German football, they're called Kutter? Kutten? Kutten. Kutten. They're these amazing denim jackets. You put all kinds of badges on from your to how much you hate your rivals to how much you love your team. And then, I mean, look at the back of this one, they're just amazing. No country in the world does anything like this with their clothes. It can be a full house, tickets today are really, really hard to come by. Sold out, the whole stadium is sold out, yeah. like 25,000 people. I know it's a long shot, but if Frankfurt can lose to Ulm last year after holding the, the DP properly, surely they could slip up here. Or is that too long of a shot after everything that's happened? Certainly not. Who uh, traps lost it to Ville and Suleimani! We're two minutes in, the third division team is beating the first division team again! They come alone, Suleimani! And he's got two in the first 11 minutes of this cup tie. It's 2-0. This is a third division team. They were in the fourth last season. How, how is this happening twice, twice in two days? Chasing the lost cause. It'll come for Kamada. 2-1. One, one. Frankfurt have got one back. Frankfurt have got one back. Here is Kostic. He's in space. Oh, that's unstoppable. Who would have thought this was the best game of all? The friendly. Let's go! That would have been a worldie. Mannheim now taking control of the game. They're going for the lead. It's 2-2 now, but someone has got the score, surely. And listen to that crowd, look at him! It's here for Jan Marks. Oh! That is very special from Jan Marks! An unbelievable goal! <laughs> Substitute. Cross was deflected. 3-3. Three, three. I didn't even see it. This is insane. Six goals. But they're still bouncing. And Ravich. Oh, that's neatly done. Frankfurt in front for the first time this afternoon. 4 3 Franklin taking the lead with nine minutes, you've got to be kidding me, we've got seven goals. Five three. Waldhof Mannheim suffer a brave defeat as the 2018 DFB Cup winners survive a massive scare. Alright, well that's it. Five three, the big boys win.
but what an experience. Three days, we've gotten scenes on and off the pitch, and to finish it with something like this, in a small town filled with 20,000 people, we have had the magic of the DFB Pokal. I think I might just have to come back for the second round.